Hi, this is Tong from Rutgers University, and next I will give the talk about my recent work, which is indefensibility for public key crypto systems. And this is a joint work with Mark Sandre. And let's start. In the real world, when we design a crypto primitive, it would be very hard to predicate how would it, how it would be used. For instance, for instance, here we design a, a PKE. Uh, for some system, maybe the software developer just wanted to be CCA, and for some for some other systems, it might use the wanted to be leakage resilient or the related key attack secure and so forth. And the fact is that the schemes that achieve different security model are quite different, and even worse. The software developer even doesn't know what kind of security model it wants to achieve, and maybe they just plug our primitives into their systems. And in fact, this is very dangerous for security. So another question is the following. Can we, des can we design a magic scheme that capture all the security models to roll them all? And to answer this question, the typical solution is that we can consider about the idealized model. And let's have a recap of the recent work. For the hash function, the idealized model is a random oracle, and for block cipher, the idealized model is a random key implementation, and for groups, of course, it is generic generic group model. And uh, by and uh, there is a there, there is a recent interesting paper by Barbosa and Fajim. They formalized the ideal uh, the ideal secret key encryption as the random key injection. And the question is that, what's the idealized model for public encryption or any primitives in public setting? This is quite unknown yet, and this is what our work is going to do. In our work, we are going to consider, we consider about three primitives in public setting, which are NAC, non-integrity OK exchange, uh, public key, and the digital signature, and we propose three ideal notions for them, which are ideal NAC, ideal PKE, and ideal signature. And due to time limits, we would, uh, we would only focus on the first one, and ideal NAC. What is ideal NAC? As we discussed above, we know that it would be the idealized model for NAC. And how can we interpret it properly? Let's firstly simplify the NAC as follows. Here it only consists of two algorithms, KGIN and shared key. KGIN takes the secret key as input and output the public key, and the shared key takes the takes the public key and the, shared, uh, and the secret key as input and output the corresponding shared key. And the correctness requires that the shared shared key of BK1 and SK2 is identical to the shared key of BK2 and SK1. And next, let's apply the Barbosa and the Fashim's idea. Here. We just uh, we just uh, formalize the idea as uh, the, the key gene as a random injection and the shared key here is a random function. Does it work? Unfortunately, no, because recall that for for NAC there is additional correctness requirement for uh, for for this. So we have to we have to make sure this sentence work. And to and to do that we need we need defined as follows. Ideal NAC here is a random tuple of functions subject to x, y, z, where nkg is an injection such that maps x to y, and sk is a function that maps x times y to z. And for the correctness, we require that for any x1, x2 in x, this equation holds. Okay, here, this is actually the definition of the ideal, the ideal definition of the ideal NAC. And next, we go to the construction. We see that this is uh, the ideal NAC is an uh, idealized model, and of course, it does not exist in the real world. So when we talk about the construction, we talk about we need to uh, construct it in another idealized model, say random oracle model. And to do that, we have to apply the indefensibility framework, which is proposed, which was proposed by Mario Renner and Holliston in 2004. And in the in the in the indefensibility framework, they say that the construction is as good as the ideal NAC, NKG and SK. And more detailedly, indefensibility involves two worlds, 
the real world and the ideal world. In the real world, it consists about the construction and the random oracle, and where the, the under construction has access to the random oracle. And in the, and in the ideal world, it consists of the ideal NIC and the simulator, where the simulator has access to NKG and NSK. And for any adversary, that has the adversary has access to both to all of this. And the security of interfaceability is to is to show that these two worlds are, in, are, cl are close to each other. And one thing why I want to emphasize, um, I want to emphasize that in the framework of interfaceability, everything is under controlled by the adversary, which means the secret key, the randomness, the nonce, everything is controlled by the adversary, and they can be related. They can be any. They can be chosen in any related version. The next question is why we choose interfaceability. According, according to their, their theorem, we know that if our construction is indifferentiable from ideal NIC, then our construction is secure in many adversarial environments in random oracle model. And those environments include the shared key, the unpredicated shared key against the active attacker, liquid resilient, KDM, RKA, and even more combined secure. Which means that we our scheme can be both leaky resilience and KDM. And it also covers some unknown yet security. As long well as the security game can be represented by a single stage game, uh, the indefinability framework covers that. Okay, next question is what's the hardness of our, of this work? And what's the barrier? We know that uh, the thing we are concerned about is in the public setting, and due to the famous separation result by Impaglis, Azo, and Rudik, we know that random oracle itself can never be sufficient, and we have to add a new nutrition. And here we add a standard model neck as the additional new additional nutrition, and we try to and we try to combine these two together. However, the barrier is the following. Ideal NIC has no structures, uh, while the standard model NIC uh, always, uh, not always, uh, often has structures when it applies like groups or like RWE, they have some structures. And, and those are the barriers, and, uh, and, uh, and that's the difference, and that's the barrier, so we, we need to combine these two things together to make sure that our indifferentiable NIC has has no structures from the outer layer, but in the inner layer, they still can use the struct things to run the public citing uh, com com computation. And that's the, that's the main barrier and the strategy. We combine these two things together. And here's the summary of our work. We, first, we firstly bring in the infatuability to the public citing and propose the three notions, ideal, uh, which are ideal NIC, ideal PKE, and ideal digital signature. And then we built an indefensible NIC from random oracle plus double strong CDH assumption. Here, double strong CDH assumption is the assumption is the CDH assumption associated with the DDH oracle. And then we built an indefensible NIC PKE from ideal NIC plus random oracles. And parallelly, we built a, a indefensible NIC from random oracle plus bilinear DDH assumption. And again, due to time limits, we would only focus on the like result. Okay, here's the outline of this talk. Firstly, we gave the like construction, and then gave the intuition of the simulator, and then we conclusion. We conclude for the for the construction. Uh, now the NIC consists of, uh, consists of two algorithms, KGIN and uh, shared key. And firstly, let's make the KGIN indefensible. The, uh, again, the strategy is that we try to combine random oracle and the standard model into an uh, indefensible NIC. And uh, we denote this lower case, KG shared K, to be the standard model NIC. And for the upper case, for the upper case uh, we denote the ideal case. We denote the ideal case. And, uh, to and and recall that the main barrier is that the KG has no structure has structures and the big K, the NKG has no structures. How can we do that? The one trivial attempt is we just hash it. We just we just, we just hash it, just like this. And does this work? Let's see. 
His attack, his attacker, which choose is a uh, which choose the SKS SK store itself, and uh, it form and it generates the KJSK. It generates the KJSK store and asks the simulator what's the hash value of this KJSK store, and this is at the simulator at this at this stage. It knows nothing of the, about this SK store. It only know Kjing SK store. And by the security of the NAC, we know that it uh, gave the public key. It knows nothing about the SK store. So the simulator would fail. And the reason why it fails is that the simulator knows nothing about the SK store. And how can we fix it? We add a new hash function in the inner case. We hash the SK first. And why this helps? It means, it, uh, let's say, when the adversary wants to do this again, it enforces the adversary to make this query before the H1 query. And, and, once, and once the adversary makes this query to the simulator, then the simulator has the SK store's information and would answer this query with NKG SK store, which is the proper answer. Does this work? Seems to, seems to. But the thing is that once we hash this key chain, then we destroy the group. Then we destroy the group the group structure. And once we once we use the hash H one, then we can never use the key chain value anymore. And again, we are concerned about the primitives in the public setting, and the key chain is the thing we have to use. And to do that, we are going to replace this H one with the permutation. And in this permutation, so from the outer layer, it, seems like it still looks like a random strings, but uh, there is the inverse. There is the inverse that we can have that help us to get the caging value. Okay, let's see. And and let's see how could we next. Let's see how let's how could we make the shared key indefensible. Uh, the construction okay. The, the again uh, again the construction should be the shared key. The shared key also has some structures, and uh, to get rid of the structures, we also hash it. And uh, let's see if we do that. That the what kind of the potential attack? We see that H zero SK one is is actually the lowercase SK one, and this is represented the lowercase of PK two. And we know that in the framework of indefensibility, the adversary can choose everything and control everything. So the adversary can choose the SK1 itself and choose another uppercase SK2 and force the following and, and form the following query, uh, the attack. This one we see is represented to the PK2. And once the adversary has PK2 and SK1, then it can calculate this one itself and make this query. And after the query, the attacker makes this query, make the p k j s k one, and which responds to the p k one, and test whether the answer of the s h k is equal to n s k p k one and s k two. And we see that in the real world, this equality always pass, always identical. While in the ideal world, we see that the simulator, in this step, is knows nothing about s, knows nothing about of, of all of these things, and. And and by this, and we see that the answer of this query should be this value. And there are two ways to get that. One is known the SK1, and another is known SK2. Of course, it cannot know it cannot know SK2 because it was chosen by the adversary. Uh, so the only the only possible thing is that the adversary knows SK1. However, if we do that, there is no there is no chance for the adversary to know the upper. SK1 at all, and to do that, we would to do and to prevent it, we would enforce the adversary to hand in this PK1 before the hash. What we what should we do? We add the PK1 into this hash. So this is a solution. We add the PK1, PK2 also associated with this one in this hash, and which means that the adversary has to. Switch the order of these two queries, and once the adversary makes these queries to the simulator, then the simulator would have some uh, would run some trick, which we will explain later. That how it would 
uh, how it would know SK1 here. Okay, here is our construction, and next let's see our simulator. Let's firstly see the goal of the simulator is to simulate H0, P, P inverse, and H1 properly. And what, how can I understand this properly? properly? The response of H0 and H1 should be random string, and the response of P and P inverse must be random permutation, and moreover, it's these two equations must be hold, because this, uh, this equation holds always in the, in the real world. And to do that, the simulator must be stateful, and in fact, here it would keep four tables, H0, P, and P inverse, and H1, P tables, with this kind of form. And let's see how could the how could the uh, how could the simulator answer this answer this uh, queries by using these four tables. For the H1 query, we see that the input is the uppercase SK. And uh, firstly, it would check whether it's in the H0 table. If in, then we are happy. And next, we will check the P inverse table and check whether the NKGSK is in the P inverse. And if in, then, would, then we would answer this SK as the corresponding, as, uh, corresponding result. Why we do that? Because uh, the third, uh, because recall that the third equation, the third equation we need we need to present is that NKG both involves P and H zero, and we need, but we need to keep the equation consistent always, and that's the reason for the H, H query it would also it would check both H zero and P and P inverse. And if we cannot find anything in these two tables, then it randomly sample SK and insert this part into H0 table and answer SK as, uh, as, 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 uh, as the answer. And now for the P inverse table, which takes the uppercase PK as input. Firstly, it would check P and P inverse table. If in, then we are happy. And next, uh, same again, it would also check the H0 table and check whether this one is in the H0 table. If in, of, oh, we're also happy. And next, if nothing found in these three tables, we would, we would sample a random secret key and uh, response the value as the KG as K as the response. We know here is the gap. In the real world, the answer is a random string. While in the ideal world, this is a random public key, and this is the gap. And to make sure these these two distributions are close, I mean are combinational close, we need we need to assume a, a, a security a security requirement which is pseudo random public key, which means this part is pseudo random, so it's it's combinational close to the random string. That's the that's the uh, hello idea of the P inverse query. And next, let's see the P query. And in this P query, so we will show how the uh, how the adversary how, how the simulator uh, how the simulator try to prevent the attack we illustrate above. Firstly, again, it would check the P P inverse and H H zero table. If in, then we are very good. And next, if nothing found in these three tables, it would sample as K and insert this thing into the P table and would answer this one as the response. We see that this one is well formed because NKG is a random injection. And the thing is that why we do that, that this technique? How can why we cannot just use a random string? If not, if the, if we just use a random string, and how that SK gives the additional power? We recap the, the, the attack we illustrated before, and we see this part it represents the PK1, and this part illustrated as the lower PK2, and it would query this one, and would test whether the answer of this one is identical to the NK, NSK, PK1, and SK2. And we see that to, uh, in the answer, in the answer, in, in the answer of this of the first query, the simulator would choose the SK as the upper SK itself and save and save it as the inner state, and would use this one and would use this one to answer some queries for the future.
which is for the third, for the which is for the query of for the for the query of this of the, for the third query, it would answer it by an SK PK two SK one, and uh, we see that this is this is PK two and this is SK one, and uh, of course the address, the simulator can answer it, and this is the technique that the simulator how to prevent the this kind of attack. And for the H1 query, firstly check the H1 table, and then using H0, P, and P inverse table to test the validity of this one. And if and if cannot and then does the and if and if the, we cannot use the H0, P, and P inverse table to test the validity, then just replace it with a random string. And now let's see how could we test the validity. For instance, we say pk1 is in h0, pk2 is in p. And uh, then, since pk1 is in h0, then we know the lower sk1 and the pk2 in p, then we know the lower case of pk2. So the simulator can calculate the, the shared k itself and test whether they are equal. If pass, then we can answer it by sk, sk1, pk2, else just random strings. And the underlying, and the underlying Secure requirement for the shared key is that the shared key is unpredictable against an active attacker. Okay, here we gave the uh, the intuitive of the uh, the intuition for the simulator, and by this simulator, we can show that we 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 we, we by this simulator we can show that our neck is our our neck is indifferentiable from the ideal neck. Okay, now we come to the conclusion. In this, in this talk, we propose three, uh, three ideal. We, we bring in the indefensibility to the public setting, and we propose the, the three ideal notions, which are ideal, ideal as uh, ideal notions for the primitive for three primitives: ideal Nike, ideal PKE, and ideal signature. And we construct uh, indefensible Nike in the random Oracle model, and then construct an indefensible PKE in the ideal neck model. And parallelly, we also construct the indifferentiable signature in the, random, in the random oracle model. And of course, this is the first attempt to try to bring the indifferentiability into the public setting. And we sincerely hope more uh, more works about indifferentiability in public setting coming soon. And, and that's all. Thank you.